Welcome back. In this session, we're going to learn about functions which are working on polynomials generally. And uh, let's have a list of them here. We we'll learn about the function polyval, which is for the evaluation of polynomials in certain points given to them. And two functions, poly and roots. Roots is a function which gives us the roots of a given polynomial. And poly forms a polynomial with given set of roots. And these are somehow our opposite functions. And there is a function named polyfit, which fits a polynomial with a given degree to a given set of data points. And that can be seen as an interpolation method. And we have two functions, conv and deconv. And the conv performs convolution, and also it can be used to perform polynomial multiplication. If you like to multiply two polynomials, you are actually convolving two polynomials. And the conv function is for performing multiplication of polynomials. And deconv is for deconvolution, and it can be used for division of polynomials. And these are inverse of each other. And we have poly there and poly int. And from name, you can infer that poly there is the derivative of polynomials, and it computes the derivative of a given polynomial, exact derivative of polynomial, and poly int does the integration of polynomials. So we learn how to use these functions in this session. Okay, about representing polynomials. We, if we are going to represent this polynomial, for example, a n x to the power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 and a 1 x and a 0. Then we can represent this with a vector as a n a n minus 1 a n minus 2 and a 2 a 1 and a 0 so this vector is a representation of this polynomial in matlab and all of these functions polyval polyroots all of them uses this notation to represent the polynomials and work on them so let's have the polyval here let's for example work on these polynomial, for example, p1x as x cubed minus 2x plus 5, for example. We're going to evaluate the value of this polynomial in various points. Uh, p is, the coefficient of this term is 1, and we have 1 here, and the x squared is absent here, and so we have 0 as its coefficient, and then minus 2 and 5 and this is the polynomial we have here and if we for example want to evaluate this polynomial in point 0 we'll have 5 and in point 1 we'll have 4 and in point 2 we'll have this and for example in these points we'll have three values and so we can evaluate this polynomial in various points and plot it. So let's create a function and do some clearing stuff here. They're not necessary, I just put them to have a clear workspace and screen when running the program. The polynomial is 1, 0, minus 2, and 5. And for example, we have a vector of values x from minus 1, minus 2 to 2. 100 values here and we have the polyval of this polynomial on these points and we can plot x and y here and let's save the program and run it sorry this is the polyval and that's it we have the value of polyval here and we can Turn on the grid here, and you see that this 
polynomial has a root less than minus 2, you can extend this to minus 6 as well, and minus 3 will be enough, I think. You'll get this. The root of this polynomial is very close to minus 2, and we can find the root using the roots function if we'd like. So the roots of this polynomial are these two imaginary roots, complex roots, which are complex conjugate to each other, and one real root. And you know, any polynomial with odd order, with odd degree, has at least one real root. And here we have one real root and two complex roots here and that's it the roots can be found by roots function and if we calculate the roots and store it in an array for example named r we can form a polynomial using the function poly of r and this will give us the polynomial coefficients so roots and poly are inverse of each other. Roots accepts the coefficients of polynomial and returns back the roots. And poly accepts the list of roots and creates a polynomial. However, if we, for example, have another polynomial, two times p, we can calculate the roots of this q as this, and if we create a polynomial using this roots, we'll get p. So the output of roots function is always have one as its first element. So for in this sense, the roots and poly functions are not inverse, complete inverses. However, they act like inverse, and because the roots of some non-equal polynomials can be same and this is a function n to one roots can be same between two or more polynomials with different coefficients for example q and p have same set of roots but they are different and poly always creates a polynomial with one as the first coefficient Okay, if we create some numbers, for example, some random data, and we can fit some polynomials to it. Or simply, for example, let's have some points of this polynomial. Let's run this. And that's it. We can, for example, let's have x as minus 1, 0, 2, and 3. And we can calculate the polyval of this polynomial at these points. So we have x and y here, or we can transpose it. This column contains our input variables or independent variables, and this column contains our dependent variable or output variables. And we can perform polynomial fitting by polyfit function. Polyfit accepts the x input variable, y output variable, and a degree. So we put 3 as degree and it will return us a polynomial of the third order. So we'll have 1, 0, minus 2, and 5, the exact solution we are seeking for. And if we provide a lower degree, this will be the closest second order or quadratic polynomial to our original data and original polynomial set and this is a linear regression and this will be a zero order polynomial and that's the 11.5 that's the closest constant number to our data set we can compute all of these for example uh, let's this values here let's uh, copy the code let's for example add some x here as minus one zero two and three and y 
equals to polyval of this polynomial at these points and we can calculate the third order approximation of this and that will be the same but we can perform this polyfit to x and y and with third order uh, let's create a cell array for example cell array of four rows and one column and four n equal to zero two three and p n plus one equals to polyfit of x y and n so this will give us an array named p let's remove this and replace it with a we can replace it with q let's run this and let's save it and we'll get a q here save it let's run the program we have a q here q1 is the constant approximation this is the linear approximation this is the quadratic approximation and this is the final and exact solution we want to have and we can evaluate these polynomials and have some approximations for example we can have z as cell array of four and this and z of n plus one can be polyval of q n plus one and we can provide it the value of x here and now we can add subplot here one two two and plot for example versus x the value of z1 and this is the constant value we have we can put this inside a for loop and from 0 to 3 and that's n plus 1 and let's have a hold down here and let's have the grid on okay this is the exact polynomial we have and this is the constant polynomial this is the linear approximation and this is the quadratic approximation and that's it we can also put a display name here uh, we can put here the num2 str n and put n equals to num2 str n as the names and we can legend show sorry legend on uh, ah that's it we have an extra space here let's remove it and run the program and here we have legends and they are approximations of same data set also we can add up some noises and perform polynomial fitting which is studied and investigated in our previous sessions on curve fitting and polynomial fitting in the chapter for interpolation okay we can compute the multiplication of two polynomials for example if we have another polynomial let's name this as p and this as q and that's x2 plus 2 and if we calculate the px times qx we'll have a fifth order polynomial and we're going to find out what are the coefficients of this polynomial okay let's define this we have p as 1 0 minus 2 and 5 1 0 minus 2 and 5 and q equals to 1 0 and 2 and this is the q and we can calculate the convolution of these polynomials or multiplication of these polynomials convolving p and q will be this and that's a fifth order polynomial that will be according to this i copy this here and that will be this 5x squared 
and minus 4x plus 10. That will be the multiplication of these two polynomials. However, let's name this as r. If we're going to calculate rx divided by px, for example, we can use the deconv function. First, let's remove this. So let's name this as r. We have r, we have p, and we can calculate the convolution of these functions. We provide r first and then p, and we'll get the q. Or we can provide q and we'll get the p. And this can be used as division of polynomials. So convolution or conv function work as multiplication of polynomials and deconv or the convolution function will work as division function so we can perform multiplication and division of polynomials using these functions and finally we have two other functions polydere and polyint the derivative of this function will be if we calculate this p prime of x will be 3x squared minus 2 and the derivative of this function will be 2x. Let's calculate the polydere. Polydere of p will be 3x squared 0x minus 2. And that's exactly what we want to get. And 3x squared minus 2. And polyderivative of q will be 2 times x. And that's correct. However, for integration, if we integrate this polynomial, we'll get this value. For example, let's name it P, capital P, and we'll get this. And you know that this is a constant, and if we calculate the derivative of this function, we'll get the original polynomial. You can provide this constant value to polyint function, and it will use your provided value however if you do not provide any values for this constant you'll get zero and if we integrate this function we'll have this so let's check for the results sorry the p is this and poly int of p will be this and you see the final coefficient is assumed to be zero and if you provide another value the function will use the provided value for the constant the integration constant so we have one divided by four here and zero and minus one zero and minus one and five and plus c and that can be defined by u by user and we have q here and if we integrate this q assuming that the constant value is minus one we'll get this one divided by three and zero and two and minus one and that's it we have integrated a polynomial and of course if we calculate the poly there of this function we'll get this and you see, this is exactly equal to the Q, our original polynomial. And if we calculate poly end of poly there of Q, we'll get this. And the final element in this sense will be removed unless you provide the exact value and that will be the same. However, uh, poly end and poly there are generally inverse of each other because they are integrating and differentiating the polynomials. Okay, uh, we've learned in this session how to use these functions to evaluate polynomials, find the roots or form polynomials using given roots and fitting of polynomials, multiplication and division of polynomials, and calculating the derivative and integrating polynomials. And that's it. We've done working with polynomials in MATLAB.